he has to actually form a government. Yes. So he can't force uh, parties to the left of him to join him. They are suspicious of him. They may uh, not wish to join him. But I, I suspect his preference behind the scenes, whatever he says in public, is for a more centrist government. Mm. Let me just say, though, if he does form a more right-wing government, it may not be quite the disaster people expect. In the past, there were some very right-wing people who came into Israeli uh, into Israeli government, and there was a lot of fear around them. I'm thinking, for example, of Ariel Sharon, of uh, Avigdor Lieberman, and others. But once they entered government, they shifted quite dramatically to the center. So it's not impossible that even though the right-wing party has fiery rhetoric, the nature of politics, especially in coalition government, is compromised, and those previously very right-wing politicians may shift and not quite be as sort of belligerent as uh, many people fear they might be. Well, let me throw a name into the ring, and forgive me if I pronounce it incorrectly, um, Itamar ben Gavir, uh who's... Uh, ben Gvir. Can, can you say again? Ben Gvir. Ben, ben Gvir, sorry. Um, Itamar uh, Ben Gvir. So um, his reputation uh, goes before him, and uh, in, in all the reports I've read today, that uh, hasn't been a particularly good one, particularly for um, for the Palestinians, and it, uh, and his touting a desire to be the uh, minister of public security, which uh, again would um, would be detrimental for the Palestinians. Uh, is that a role which uh, which seems realistic, or is this just media hype? Um, well, the latest reports are that uh, he will not be offered that ministry. Um, if he is offered it, what Netanyahu, who is a very, uh, let's say, um, clever politician, has done in the past, is in other coalitions Netanyahu's headed, he's given some ministers given uh, the ministries to certain people. But then what he's done is he's stripped those uh, ministries of key powers and, give, and brought them to the prime minister's office. So if Itamar ben who, as you point out, is an extremist, or at least in the past he has said some very extreme things, if he was to be public security minister, what Netanyahu might do is actually remove some of the powers of the public security ministry, give ben Gvir a nice office, a driver, a prestige of a government ministry, but actually retain some of the key security security um, powers for himself, Netanyahu. That's the kind of thing he's done with other ministers, ministries in the past. Uh, Netanyahu is a very, very, uh, let's say, uh, sophisticated political operator. So um, I, I don't think Netanyahu wants or will allow uh, Ben Gvir to have too much power. Um, he knows it's not good for Israel, he knows it's not good for his own government, for Netanyahu's own reputation. I don't want to belittle the risks, but my hunch is some of the more alarmist uh, uh, forecasts today in the media and among opposition politicians may be overly exaggerated. That's my hunch. And I say that also based on the fact that, for example, in the outgoing government in Israel, we had a seven-party coalition. You also had two rather extremist parties. You had Yemina, which was the, the party on the right of Likud, and you had Ram, one of the Arab-Israeli, Palestinian-Israeli parties that's affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood. But in government, Ram were not radical at all. They didn't push any kind of Muslim Brotherhood type positions and policies that they previously adhered to, and nor did the right wing party Yamina. Once in government, they shifted to the center, they acted more responsibly. So we do have a track record of more belligerent uh, extremist politicians moderating themselves in this coalition system in Israel. I, I don't want to, bel to belittle the risk. I'm just saying that I'm not sure we should be overly alarmed at this point.